talk to you about uh, an initiative we're involved in at one of our customers it's called Belgacom. Uh, well, Belgacom is the incumbent uh, telco operator in Belgium. They're a very big company. They're uh, about 20,000 people strong now in Belgium. That's huge. Uh, that's, uh, that's gigantic. And having worked in, 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 in telco for uh, uh, a number of years, well, you know what is, uh, you have to change all the time. And you have to innovate all the time. Uh, so uh, at this particular point, Netflix is using their uh, revenues for their triple play. Uh, the, the, uh, the roaming rates are, are being flattened in Europe, so they're losing a lot of potential there to get, uh, make money, and they have to find new ways to, to make money. And um, within the innovation team of Proximus, uh, these two guys at the point that this report of the World Economic Forum on Telco came out, had the idea, we want to create something with uh, for an API economy, so to create an API economy and do something with IoT. So uh, the vision wasn't very clear, but uh, that was the, 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 uh, the true two uh, objectives they wanted to create. And uh, at that point in time, the Proximus was rolling out uh, a network, it's called LoRa, a LoRa network, which is kind of an IoT network for uh, for a uh, long range, uh, with a long range capacity, uh, well, uh, bandwidth. And uh, we said, I want to do something with that. So in a, for, after doing a, a proof of uh, technology with WSO2, we immediately went into uh, MVP mode. And in a few months, we created a, 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 a service, an asset, as, we, as, as they call it, to have a, um, a kind of middleware where you could order a, a dev kit from one of their partners called All Things Talk, where you could create a prototype of your own device. It was equipped with a lot of sensors. You could program your own logic into, onto that, and you could connect that to the LoRa network. And with that data, you could monetize and use that data in your own applications and, 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 and do these kind of stuff. Uh, after two months or so, we had the first release that was released in the wild. Uh, uh, it didn't look very nice, but it was a way to get involved with the objective of, uh, of, of this program, which was uh, getting into a community of developers to create your own solutions. Um, Enco is made for, by, and evolved with developers, and they want to do everything to support developers, create their own products, create their own assets onto the platform. So. Uh, to do that, you have to tap into that, that ecosystem and you have to have the tools to support developers. So everything is API driven. You can co configure the entire thing with APIs. You can use a number of data assets and a number of data sets they already have. Uh, you, you have monitoring and alerting functionality. You can broker your data, you can monetize your data there. And in the end, when you're done and you're able to commercialize your idea, you can sell it on their marketplace. So it's really the idea of an API economy combined with uh, what they have uh, as a telco operator, for, uh, as a as network capacity, and their data sets. So if you look at the portal, and it's www.enco.io, uh, uh, you'll find that these products at this point in time are, are there. You can, um, um, well, they can be combined, they can be used, they can be reused. Uh, for free for, to a certain extent, and you can extend them. Uh, uh, well, you can uh, get additional support and additional SLAs if you pay for them. So, what's there is at this point, uh, uh, well, the way to uh, get, get uh, uh, devices up and running and to build them. So, All Things Talk is a partner where you can buy these things. You can um, tap into data they have, for instance, for a directory services or SMS or uh, service messages. They, 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 all that are things that a telco operator does. And well, then use them in, in the analytics part or in, the, in your own cloud application or on Azure. Uh, and you can combine that in your own uh, solution. That's the general idea. Uh, as far as the solution architecture is concerned, uh, we immediately, uh, and I was involved in the beginning, and this is the picture I know, 
uh, the, the architecture was quite comprehensive from the beginning. So uh, it was uh, high, high, highly scalable, uh, made redundant with four uh, WSO2 products, with Splunk as a, as a, as a big data database, well, as a, as a monitoring database, as a uh, Cassandra for big data to store the event data. So it was quite large. Uh, so uh, the idea is that you have uh, well, some base components and that you can extend them and you can build services on top. So you see a number of them there, uh, software uh, sensor as a service, directory services, location data. So for instance, they could, and that's something we have uh, been talking to other customers of, their, uh, of us uh, with, uh, about. For instance, they, the data from their mobile network and mobile usage can be sold as a statistic, for instance, to do crowd management. So these are the ideas that, that circle around this, this platform. Um, what was, um, well, what we came to a certain conclusion at a certain point of time, this first architecture was a bit large. It was very complicated. And what re was really fundamental uh, on, on the architecture were two things. If you want to engage in a, in a digital economy, the fabric, well, the, 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 the thing you need are APIs. That's the one thing you need. And uh, the thing is, they want to tap into communities, but they want to really offer that to quite a number of other chains. So if you, you, well, the idea is to create something and you'll be able to sell it to anyone. So you need to tap into a lot of identity sources too. So that combination makes for us, the, the core fabric of, uh, of, 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 of the solution. And all the other parts are not that important in a sense that at this point in time, we're actually reducing the complexity of the architecture by removing, well, uh, for instance, the ESB, which has too little value to uh, compensate for the complexity of managing and maintaining this, this entire thing. Um, this is, well, and, and, and our experience with, with WSO2 is, is that it, uh, it was really something that wasn't core to the, to the architecture and the intent of the architecture, that identity server would play such a prominent role, but the idea to bring your own uh, uh, identity and provide SSO over all these applications, because this is really the, the, the actual uh, architecture of the entire thing. So you have a marketplace, you have uh, all a number of websites which aren't really part of the, the solution themselves, they're from partners. Uh, be able to, to connect that to the API manager and provide everything as an API and have all these sources of identity that is really vital to, 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 to build this community of, of, uh, for, for building this uh, API economy. Um, the interesting part is that the idea in itself is valid. There are customers on that. It's not a tremendous uh, commercial uh, endeavor at this point uh, because it, it, you know, it, it, is, it is an innovation project. And there are a few things that, that came out of it were, which are quite interesting. Um, for us as Real Dolmen, we had the chance to develop a number of our own solutions that are in the, in the, in the area of, uh, of, of, of well, the, the, the problems they try to solve. One of them is a semantic uh, SOA uh, 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 solution, which gives contextual uh, service selection. Uh, the other one is a secure sandbox solution to put uh, your own code in a secure sandbox, really mandatory access control kind of thing, where partners could put their code on the platform without being able to, to connect to everything. So, And the third one is uh, a solution to uh, well, if you have a LoRa a network, its transmission bandwidth is very limited. So if you have a device that is kind of dumb and sends a lot of events, that will get that net, uh, network saturated quite, quite high. So it's a solution to build intelligence into the Arduino uh, solution. So it's a smart filter, it's a learning, uh, it's a learning mechanism at, at uh, Arduino level. Um, a very interesting for us uh, uh, side effect of this project was the fact that uh, the Enterprise Architecture Department was involved from the beginning. And what they did was uh, they created well, uh, a yes, typical uh, uh, IT organization or t uh, IT architecture of a large company, a few thousand systems or 3,000 at a certain point in time. Uh, 
their agility to move on, it's, it was not great. And they didn't want to use APIs as a way to get a, a, a second mode of operation and be faster in developing new solutions. So what they did was on an uh, provide a structure based on business capabilities. And what they are going to do next is uh, expose all these different uh, capabilities as an API. Uh, where the int initial intent was only to do it with API manager. Now they have seen with this, with this uh, ENCO project that identity is also very vital to that, to that, to that job. So the, they, they chose the both products to uh, uh, support that. For this, this is uh, for us a, a very big thing. Um, what is also learned, uh, of how Proximus learned from this project is that you need a different way to build software and support software. So um, we didn't use the update manager yet. This, this comes before, uh, uh, so it, we used Puppet. Uh, during the process of putting everything on containers, we did it first for development, now it's for the entire production uh, environment. And the most important thing uh, maybe is that you design an architecture that is extendable. I think that is the most vital thing that, 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 like, that, that, that we have done. And that's the way they can do things faster. Uh, they, we're, we're delivering projects in, in months now, or they, we can do, be able to do projects in months where before that wasn't, wasn't possible. Uh, one, one other thing, um, there's a, a company in Belgium that is building a sort of a authentication solution based on data from banks, telcos, uh, water companies, whatever, on the information they have, because they have a trusted relationship with their customers. And we, WSO2 was used to expose their, that, that kind of information to this company to, uh, um, to build this solution. So uh, for us, the, the main thing was, uh, that came out was we started, we started in this, this, this uh, conversation with this customer as a, as a well, normal supplier, as, a, as an integrator. And we evolved towards a, a, a partnership model where we start thinking about customer cases where we approach customers and saying, if we can build a solution together with them, they have the network infrastructure, they have a number of assets that are really interesting for you guys to consider, for instance, for crowd management. That is the way we started working together. So for, all, for us, that's an entire new of, way of, of looking at uh, things. So um, I don't know if I have time left. Well, so I have two slides, so I'm, I'm gonna be brief about that. As I said before, uh, the things we learned uh, here are uh, very simple. This architecture, we started out very big. We have to bring it down. Um, it is a constant battle of uh, moving forward very fast and trying to get things on the, on, on, on the market and, well, maybe choosing not to be scalable or, or uh, of very high qu uh, quality in certain domains. So that's, that is a constant battle and, and the team has, well, it's not easy for a team. And um, well, the second thing is that um, if you are in traditional software delivery, um, you're used to having a customer who knows what he wants and it gives you specifications and requirements that are more or less, well, uh, has some idea what they're, they're doing. Here the team had to do something that is not uh, that normal to them and they really had to think along and create a, great uh, digital assets for them because what, what they, they were not that, that technical. And it was a completely different role and that put a lot of stress on the team. So that is a, a very important thing when you do these kind of projects, getting the right team and maybe optimizing the team and, and, and coaching them into thinking in a digi digital matter. That was a, a tremendous effort. It's still the one thing I do in this project actually is coach these guys and uh, uh, yeah. Hope to get to get there. Well, that's about it. So.